Ladies and gentlemen, there she is. Once again, it's Ronnie Bennett. How are you, Ronnie? I'm just fine. How are you? And we're talking to her in Lake Oswego. Yeah, it's just south of Portland. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just a suburb. Is that what it's yes. considered? Okay. Uh, yes. looks like a, it looks like you have a nice place there. It uh, looks cool. Looks great. It's nice. It's nice. Yeah. yeah. Same yeah. furniture yeah. I always remember, just in different places. That's all. <laughs> I never change anything. <laughs> you know, I figure you get a sofa, it's for life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So and when we started off today, before we went on, she said, what do you want to talk about? And I said, I don't know. And she says, I don't know. And I said, well, we just start from point A and we find out where we wind up. And I guess the thing I would like to talk to you about, because you're you're an expert in aging. Mainly, well, I don't know about well, an expert, no, but I know a lot. Well, yeah. let's face it. We're all experts in aging. Uh, and when you get there. <laughs> when you get there, you're, you're an expert in aging. <laughs> but you do a, you do Time Goes By. Uh, dot net, which is your uh, blog, and you've been doing that for how many years now? God, almost fifteen. Fifteen years. I don't know where the time went. It's a surprise yeah. to me too. And it's all about what it's like to really get old, you know. And I had a perfect example of that the other day. I've been trying for the longest time to get a friend of mine into this studio to do an interview with, and his name is Jack Garfine. Uh, he was a uh, one of the founders of the Actors Studio West. He was with the Actors Studio in New York. He was a Broadway director, directed a couple of films. But his the the way he started out in life was in a concentration camp. That How he, old is this guy? Th this guy is now 87 years old. He went to a concentration camp when he was 13. Uh, and as I look at Jack, I go... That's what getting old is, you know. I mean, because eighty-seven is getting advanced. All right. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Hell, yeah, I'm, you just I just figured that out. You huh? just turned seventy-seven. I just turned seventy-eight, and that's kind of advanced. But he's really advanced, and I'm watching him slowly, between you and me, decline. You know. And I love the man. I've, I've only known him about 10 months, but we have just come to absolutely adore the guy. Nice. Uh, and, and we become very close. And I, I keep saying to myself, you know, you just don't want to get close to somebody who's that old because they're, you're not going to have them that long. Doesn't you know? matter if you have them today. If you have them today. So we, we did an interview and stuff. And um, I started to think about it. And whenever you see a thing about, I said to him, I said, uh, you know, you're probably one of the last survivors of the of the camps. And he said, no, there are a lot of us. I that, just saw a story about one today who was a, who is still with us, 112, probably the oldest survivor. Yeah, but here's the thing that suddenly hit me: maybe what he went through, the horror of it all, the the, the pain of it all, uh, the coming within three days of death of it all somehow made him tough enough that he's now 87, that they live longer because of that experience. You think there's well, anything to a that? a lot didn't, too. People die at every age. I don't think that. I don't think so. Yeah. And does he talk about it? Because a lot of people won't who survive. Oh, he talked about it. Yeah, yeah. We, we got into a major uh, discussion. It lasted about an hour and 50 minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. And I had to rush him through it. I mean, I wish... I wish I, he was exhausted because he's been having some health issues. And so I couldn't, it's like I wish I had 10 hours with him just on that subject. But I had to kind of rush him through it. Um, but the, the third part of the interview, which lasts 50 minutes, is just extraordinary about his experience in Auschwitz. And he was in 11 camps. You know, they moved him around a lot. They moved him around a lot, but he survived it. That's the thing, and it's a story of survival. It's just by just by inches there was the difference mm -hmm. between life and death. You know, uh, so I'm wondering Hard if people I'm wondering if people who go through arduous circumstances like that maybe if they come out on the other side of them, live a long, long life. I don't buy it, but. You can go ahead and, and buy it. No, but I mean, there, maybe there's something to it that toughens you, toughens your system. 
Yeah, but 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 you're you. It's an opinion. It's not a fact. You don't know the numbers. <clears throat> well, I'm not a scientist. Okay, I'm only an observer. You know, um, but you know it. I, you had a thing once. Uh, I think maybe you had it on a on a. You had it written on a qu on a pillow, that was Betty Davis's quote: the "Getting old." Oh, which everybody knows now. Yeah. Old age is not for sissies. And after the last year, I'm here to tell you that I know. I thought it, she was it, right it, before. Now I really know she's right. No, really. It, it. You know, I've got aches and pains. I mean, nothing compared to what you you've gone through. Uh, uh, but I have aches and pains, and I go. You know, it just it doesn't get any better you would think that if there was a good god in heaven you know as everybody likes to pray to that he would have done something where as you get older things get better there's a reward at that end of that ring. don't rainbow. you think some things have gotten better i've got aches and pains everybody has a different number and different intensity and you know i don't have pains and i'm i'm knocking wood as i say that i just you know, now that I'm recovered from the surgery, I don't really have daily a b pains. But, um, but what would it give? It there must be an upside for you. Uh, I'm trying to think about it. Let's see here. Uh, the fact that nobody takes you seriously anymore uh, is that an upside? No, it's not. Uh, I I don't I don't know that there is an upside. I mean, not. It, it, everything gets a little worse rather than easier or you know what I'm saying I think some I think that a lot of stuff I've learned a lot there are a lot of you know the phrase stuck in our ways about old people yeah I've really come to think that that is really really wrong one of the things I'm stuck in my ways about is my coffee in the morning for 30 years I bought it from Puerto Rico coffee on um, Bleecker Street in the village, about two blocks from where I lived yeah. in New York. Yeah. <clears throat> and when I left 10 years ago, God, more than that now. Anyway, I went to Maine for four years, and I hadn't looked at coffee in the grocery store for years because I'd been buying it at this right. wonderful shop that's been around for 100 years in New York. And um, and it, and I couldn't make sense of what I didn't want to... I, I'd went, gone through so much to find the blend I liked at Puerto Rico Coffee. I didn't want to do that again. I had done that 30 years before, and I was still very happy with it. So I just, I, you know, we had the Internet by then, by the time I moved. So I just import coffee, and I still do from Puerto Rico. Every couple of months, I buy a whole bunch. And by the way, it's cheaper because they still give you whole pounds, which you don't get in the supermarket, for a smaller price or about the same price as the supermarket. Um, and there's a whole lot of things that it took me a long time to figure out what I preferred when I was younger over a period mm -hmm. of years that yeah. you discovered. And now I don't have to think about it anymore. Yes, I am stuck in my ways. I am going to have that kind of coffee until the day I die. But that's not stuck in the way, in my ways, in, in a negative sense. It's because I figured out a long time ago what I liked best. And I don't have to think about it anymore, which gives me a little more room in my brain to think about other things. And there are tons of things like that we've done through our lives that just make it easier. You don't have to think so hard about it anymore. Yeah, just but, that alone. Well, and I, that's a small thing. And, really. and, and that's one of the reasons why advertisers covet the 18 to 49-year-old uh, oh, right. age group is because they are malleable. That if you, if you get somebody started on, say, Starbucks coffee when they're 20, in their 20s, yeah. they will probably so, continue when they're in their 60s to go out and stop at Starbucks. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that's why they don't care about the age group over that for television, because the, the trends and what you buy are set there. I've always been a Coca-Cola drinker, whether it's been regular Coke or then now Diet Coke and Coke, no, uh, zero sugar. Uh, I, I have can't. always, I've always been a, been a Coca Cola user. You cannot get me to Pepsi. I'm sorry. Well, that's been that's been a constant argument for as long as my whole life. Pepsi drinkers, Coke drinkers. I you know, think, I think it was other. Bill Maher referred Matt to Moore. referred to it as sad Coke. You know, <laughs> you know another thing that makes life easier as I get older is almost everything I can that's bothering me. I can say, okay, this too shall pass. You know. 
And it does usually, you know. Really? Um, Whatever is upsetting me at the moment or, you know, it, 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 it's always going to... Oh, oh, and here's the other thing. You know how time is supposedly goes so much faster mm-hmm. when we, as we get older? It appears to go much faster. Yeah. It means that anything that's wrong right now will go away faster than when you were younger. <laughs> 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 I mean, and it, it may be not for real, but I remember that when... When Monday came and and I would go to work and there was something I was looking forward to on Friday, it took forever for Friday to come. Now on Monday, I look at the week and next thing I know, I blink my eye and it's Friday morning. What what happened in between? I barely remember sometimes. Well, let's get to the question here then of memory. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Um, It's bothering me lately. That I, Your memory it, bothers you? It, the, the things that I do, repetitive things that I do every day, sometimes I fuck up on now. Me too. Now, is that part of getting old or just you're tired of the repetition? Oh, I don't think, you don't consciously do that to yourself. Um, I just think, you know, a few months ago, which in, in my case can mean a year or more ago yeah. when I say that, um, there was some recognized scientist, not just somebody making stuff up in their room, uh, saying that the work that he had been doing on the brain is that one of the reasons old people have trouble with memory is there's just too much stuff in there, like that, an overfilled hard drive. I heard that one too, yeah. I don't believe it. Yeah. Um, but, um, but I do, I've watched myself do things like you're talking about, the repetitive things in a different way than I used to, that I know in the, cupboard in the kitchen that a certain dishes are behind this door invariably i open the other door beside it for years i have been opening the right door suddenly for the last year i'm opening the road the wrong door and although it's not every time it's frequent enough that i notice it and it's you know it, it it's not something i stand around and think oh i need the blue dish i just go open a door when it's in my head but i open the wrong door also I don't know if this is exactly related to memory, but one of the things I've been watching myself do <clears throat> for the past two or three or four months is I don't feel like I move any slower than I did. Mm. In my case, I keep saying pre-surgery now, so I will for a while, I suppose. <clears throat> um, um, but everything seems to take longer. <laughs> I mean, even though I don't feel like I'm going any slower. For instance, I decide I need to go out. Okay, all I need is my handbag and my coat. I look at the clock, and it's 10 minutes to 12. And at 12, I happen to walk by the clock again, and I still haven't got my coat on. What did I do for 10 minutes? I mean, it drives me crazy. Well, I, uh, I, uh, here, here's the one that gets me. I have to go to the kitchen to get something. The distance between the kitchen and the bedroom is maybe a 10 second walk all right and i get to the kitchen and forget what i was trying going there to get that you know the first time that happened to me i was about 38 and i remember it distinctly because i was on my way to work and i was late and i kept a thing which i have all my life near the door a place to hang my keys so that when you come in you just automatically hang them and you know where they are all the time they weren't there yeah and I couldn't, my door in New York City opened onto the street. There's not a chance I could leave my door unlocked and go out for the day. So I go, you know, through the coat pockets from the day before and everywhere, all over the house. I can't find it. I can't find it. I can't find it. Time is going by like crazy. Suddenly, I go to the refrigerator for something, and there they are. It's an old joke these days. There are the keys in the refrigerator. I don't remember doing it. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There was an ad on TV about some woman getting Alzheimer's and the way they found out she kept leaving her key she, they found her <laughs> keys in the refrigerator and my whole blind has been forever I'll know I've got Alzheimer's when I find my keys in the refrigerator oh I found them there when I was 38 and I'm doing fine <laughs> at 77 by the way I, I this just occurred to me you know that I had a birthday on Saturday I turned yeah. 77 and I was getting ready and thinking about this chat that we were going to have today and i think i met you when i was about 17 so that means 
27, 37, 47, 57, 67, 77. We've known each other for about 60 years. Ouch. <laughs> I think maybe, let's see, how old was I when I met, I met you uh, outside the Old Town Coffee House in Sausalito, California, and somebody said, I got to get my friend Ronnie. And I, you came in, and I guess you were wearing jeans. You were, you were very, you were dressed not particularly uh, uh, femininely, okay. And so, when, jeans. I just had jeans on. What's not no, feminine about that? Well, I think you also had short hair too. So I, I when you came in, I was just, you know, it was dark, and I didn't know that Ronnie was a woman. And then all of a sudden, you started to talk, and I realized Ronnie was a female. You mean you thought I was a man for my name? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and that's when we first met. Where did we go? I can't remember. There are a bunch of people in the car. I don't remember where we were going. Yeah, I, I don't remember. And those weren't days of drugs, for me at least. So I, there isn't a loss of memory on that. I think we just drove around a little bit or something like that. I can't remember who's, who was driving the car. I thought it was you. <laughs> no, it wasn't me. No, no, I was in the back seat where you, you climbed in. That's the most I remember of that night. Not much, you know. I would think that considering how our marriage turned out, you'd want to just erase it from your memory altogether, you know. Well, you know, the Old Town Coffee House was a big favorite of mine, and I only lived two or three doors down from it, so I yeah. spent a lot of time there. Right. Yeah. yeah. It was the Beatnik Central. It's where the Beatnik movement the beat was Nicks. born. The Beatniks. You know, people sometimes, younger people think I was a hippie. I always said, no, 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 no. I was a beatnik. Most of the world has forgotten what beatniks yeah, were, but we, I was we one. Were, we were beatniks, and then that transmogrified, I guess, into hippie. Well, I don't think they were the same things. They yeah. weren't the same things, but they came, a lot of the hippies, a lot of the <laughs> hippies were beatniks. You know what I I'm didn't saying? know that. Yeah. I, I, I don't have a sense well, of that. Well, I'm, pro I'm proof of that. Younger. I'm proof of that. I was a beatnik, and then I became a hippie. <laughs> In fact, you were a hippie. I've got pictures of you with your bell bottoms and the whole thing at WMCA. But that was general fashion. And that wasn't everybody wore bell bottoms then, not just hippies. But we weren't hippies during that era? I didn't feel like I was. I was an anti-war protester. Yeah, but you didn't feel you were? Hmm? You didn't feel you were. I never, I never felt a kinship with with a hippie ethic. Did you no. feel I was a hippie? Not particularly, but if you want to think so, that's okay with me. No, <laughs> I, I think that I was. I mean, you know, I mean, I guess. Well, you grew your hair really long. Yeah. And a beard? Did yeah. you have a beard? I had a little bit of a beard. Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, uh, and you wore bell bottoms. Well, that's all you could buy. That's I mean, what I'm saying. I mean, it had nothing to do with hippies. It had to do with current you know, fashion. People say, why do these kids today wear such stupid clothing? It's because they're trapped into wearing that clothing. Because any era, I remember, I hated platform shoes. The idea of platform shoes was an anathema to me. And I went into a, a shoe store one day to buy some shoes, and all there were were platform shoes. I had no other choice. I found out, found myself wearing platform shoes because I was forced to because of the fashion trend of the of the day. My current fashion complaint, among many, but uh, about old people, but just in general too, is that you, it's hard to find anything with sleeves anymore. It's very, very hard for women. Yeah. I don't think it's probably true for men. But there's nothing but sleeve. Th and I want to thank uh, Michelle Obama for that. She's the one who first started showing up with sleeveless things when they were when her husband was first elected president. And it became a fashion statement, and it hasn't gone away yet. Right. right. And I happen to like sleeves. <laughs> you happen to like sleeves. <laughs> Well, I wear a little, you know, I wear like a shirt over my sleeveless, whatever. I don't know, I'm not, my arms are not, I don't think they're, you know what's gotten old? My hands have gotten old. In fact, the worst thing I did was lose 55 pounds. Oh, you get all wrinkled then. Yeah, because my hands weren't <laughs> wrinkled when I was 55 pounds heavier, right? Alex, you're 78, it's okay. It's yeah. okay. But I was always proud that my these were the Schwarzman hands, you know. And <laughs> what is special about Schwarzman hands? You could tell it. My father had the same hands, same fingers. 
uh, and they were musicians' hands. Oh, that's very interesting. My grandmother, my mother's mother, died yeah. giving birth to my mother, so none of us ever knew her. Mm -hmm. But I have a photograph of her at age 15. Back in the early part of the 20th century, you went to a studio to have a picture yeah. taken rather than with a phone. And they had backgrounds people stood against. And she's standing against a kind of woody background and leaning on a fence. And her hand, if you can see this, mm -hmm. is over the fence post like this. Yeah. Whenever I look at that photograph, her hand looks just like mine. My grandmother that I yeah. never knew. Yeah, I think you inherit things like hands, you know. I often wondered, excuse me for, for diverting into a, uh, into a ditch here. but <laughs> I can't wait to hear this. I'm wondering if, for guys, penises are inherited. <laughs> I don't even want to go because, there. And, we, and, none of us, and none of us know <laughs> don't be, even go because there. nobody wants to ask how big was dad's penis. <laughs> Stop it. So we never had an answer to that question because we're afraid to ask it. What difference would it make? Well... You know, I mean, you know, if you if your if your father had a short penis and you've got a short penis, then obviously it's inherited. <laughs> Can we talk about something else, please? <laughs> I just it was it's just something that has always bothered me, and I've never had a sufficient answer on it because nobody does any research into this. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> yeah. Probably not. You know. Most people don't even talk about it, and particularly when they're being recorded. The, the other question a lot of kids don't ask their parents is, how was, how, under what conditions was I conceived? Did you ever ask your parents that question? No, never occurred to me. I did ask my mother. I mean, mother. I know where babies come from. Yeah, but I did ask my mother. Well, it was the bed that you had. You as a don't kid. want to hear the answer. Most people don't want to hear the answer because it's not what you thought. What you what you think you're going to hear is, well, we decided that we wanted another member of our family and we wanted somebody to love and adore. Okay, that's that's the answer you want. All right. The answer I got was we had moved into a new apartment. The furniture hadn't arrived yet, so we had sex on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, did you see this morning? It's very charming. If you haven't seen it, go up to YouTube and look at it. Mm. Seth Meyers' wife had their second yes, I saw. No, I saw lobby him. of their building yesterday. I, I don't watch that show, but last night for some reason I was. I thought I'd watch and see what Corden was doing, and see what Seth Meyers was doing, and he went into that story about his wife yeah. giving birth in the uh, in the uh, lobby of her of their building. Yeah. With her it's a, it's a love. It's about ten minutes long, and it's just he's just charming and lovely about it. It's yeah, really yeah, nice. Yeah, but he also and also funny. He's got a few good. Well, he lines. also talks about the fact is he says I'm 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 glad nobody came down in the elevator because Why? that's that's the oh way God. she was facing. <laughs> He said, and he said that when he was calling nine one one, that he in in the space of one minute he had to say to them, "We're having a baby." Or, we're going to have a baby. We're having a baby. Oh, we had a baby. <laughs> it was that quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, but amazing how many firemen showed up. Yeah, well, it's Seth Meyers, you know. Yeah, but you would think it'd be like one or two firemen that would show up. But no, it was like a whole... But squadron or something. Squadron there or were whatever. A whole lot of guys in the photographs, yeah. But it's funny that somebody was taking photographs during this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's everything is recorded by cell phone now. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know that. You know, it, it, what's funny is that we are so uh, dependent on hospitals and everything that when we give birth to a child, we don't know naturally what to do. Babies do. <laughs> Babies do. The baby popped out and she had the baby in her arms, but I don't think she knew where to cut the cord or do that kind of thing. The fireman knew how to do it. And it was very, what's funny about it is that Seth Meyers seemed surprised that the fireman knew how to do that when he, when he told that part of the story. Yeah. He was surprised that they knew, and when he got to the hospital, he said he asked the doctor, did they do it okay? And firemen know how to do this. They're trained to do that, you know, and the EMTs that go with them. Yeah, and they I said... I was just he, surprised said, he didn't know. They said he did a very good job, the firemen. Yeah. So, you know, it's... Uh, hey, look, I just looked. We've run out of time. 
is this silly or what? See, you didn't know. What are we going to talk about? We could talk for another well, half I, hour. It's interesting like. to us. I'm not so sure about everybody else. In fact, it's <laughs> interesting that we talk to each other more now than we did when we were married. And I think that that's, uh, uh, that's, true. A, that's, a, that's a good thing. True, true. Uh, we'll have to talk about marriage sometime. Yes, I know. Well, I you've got a lot more experience at it than I do. I only did it once. Well, I was all you ever needed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've always I, seen it. I soured it's an you old, on the old joke. You know, never mind about the old joke. I'll, we'll we'll save it. For I that soured discussion. you on the subject. Uh, More last year, <laughs> <laughs> right? Isn't it funny? She's seventy-seven. Just turned seventy-seven. Happy birthday! I'm seventy-eight, and we're sitting here laughing about all of this, which uh, you know, at the time we weren't laughing about it. You know? Wasn't funny then. No. That's, by the way, to bring this full circle back to where we began. Yeah. That's one of the great things to me about growing old is that things that were just overwhelming, particularly negative things that were just awful when I was in my 20s, 30s, even 40s. It's now you just, oh, geez, that's too bad. Now move on. It's just not as big a thing anymore. It right. doesn't mean that I don't feel sad when sad things happen or angry when somebody does something that makes me angry but it's it doesn't overwhelm me the way it did when i was young and that's a big wonderful difference with being old i wish i could say that was true of me i'm not it's not that things bother me i worry about things more than i yeah, used yeah but then you know i don't know what worry is i don't understand what it and i remember that during being married I, to you i I, that I, I don't understand what 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 goes on in someone's mind who worries? I, I worry about things before. No, I found out why. Uh, if we can take a few more minutes here, screw my audience. Uh, <laughs> we'll get to you in a second, guys and gals. Uh, that uh, um, who was the guy who wrote uh, Swimming to Cambodia? Um, oh God! Can't make it come to mind. Well, I was in, uh, Spalding Gray. Uh, yes. So I was interviewing Spalding Gray, and uh, he. Uh, I, I started talking about, we were talking about traveling, because, you know, he swam to Cambodia. Uh, and uh, uh, I said, you know, it's, it's, tr it's terrible. Before I go on a trip, I go panicky. I start worrying about every aspect of the trip, like, will I be able to make this train when I do this, and blah, 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 blah. And he said, well, I'm the same way. And I said, yeah, why do we do that? He said, simple. We're control freaks. We want, we always look at the worst possible scenario on everything that's going to happen before it happens, so that if it does happen, we're not surprised. That's very interesting because I don't feel that way about life. Yeah. But when I was producing live television shows way back in the 70s, after you and I broke up, every morning before we went live, before we went on the air, I would think about everything that could go wrong on this live show mm -hmm. and have in my head a solution for every single thing that could go wrong so that one day when the third camera got went down i knew what i was going to do with the other two cameras and so on and that's a little different though than worrying about whether a train is going to take it off wasn't on worrying time. it was but it was being prepared yeah, that but, you're talking but about i would let it same, obsess in a similar me. way i mean right now i'm obsessing about the fact that i have to go in for my yearly physical <laughs> will my psa go up you know not that hey my psa could go down you know? <laughs> I have the same problem about that, but it, I don't let it overtake my life. Yeah. But I can't claim credit for not allowing it to take over my life. It yeah. just is. That's who I well, am. Well, I drive. I, I, I drive my. Myself I drive my current life crazy with this. With my. Well, I, I, I sympathize. I've been there. You've been there. You should. <laughs> there's a little club. They get together on Saturdays, and they. <laughs> Ah, uh, love you. Time to go. Love you, Ronnie. You too. Take hey, care. Let's do it again in a couple of weeks, okay? Okay. Bye. Bye.